In this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about Newton's three laws of motion, and I hope to provide some examples that help put each of the laws into context. Newton's first law says, an object remains at rest or continues in motion with a constant velocity unless it experiences a net external force. So uh, there are objects, for example, uh, an object maybe that is just at rest sitting on a table, maybe we have a box sitting on a table, and it experiences two forces. There's a downward force, uh, which we sometimes call the weight or the gravitational force, that is acting on that object, but then due to the fact that it's sitting at rest on a surface, there's also an upwards force that is uh, acting on that object, and those two forces together are equal and opposite, and they cancel with one another. And so, despite the fact that this object experiences two different forces, it doesn't experience an acceleration. So in order for an object to experience an acceleration, the net force, the sum or total force that acts on it in one or more directions has to be non-zero. And those forces need to be external to the object. So uh, forces internal to the object or forces caused uh, by or within an object cannot cause it to accelerate. So if an object experiences a net external force, it can change speed or change direction, which is an acceleration. Newton's second law says that an object's acceleration is directly proportional to the net external force that's acting on it, right? That makes sense. So a net force causes an acceleration, and the magnitude or the strength of that net force uh, determines uh, what the acceleration will be. And the way that we write that in terms of Newton's second law is the net force, which is a vector, is equal to the mass, the object's mass, times the acceleration, which is a vector, right? And here we know that mass is measured in kilograms, and acceleration is measured in meters per second squared. And so a kilogram meter per second squared is a unit that we define as a Newton, which we represent with a capital letter N. And so you will see, uh, like for example in the diagram I have down below, when I draw a force vector or I'm labeling a force, uh, it will be labeled with a capital letter N for Newtons. And so the larger the net force, the larger the acceleration. But of course, uh, the mass also needs to be used to calculate what that acceleration would be. And because forces are vectors, we know that the forces in the x direction will cause accelerations in the x direction. And forces in the y direction will cause accelerations in the y direction. And so what I would like to do is I would like to work out an example where an object, the one I have drawn below on the coordinate system, is experiencing multiple forces. And I would like to figure out um, if this object that I have drawn below is, let's say, a 5 kilogram object, what would be uh, the acceleration, the magnitude and direction of the acceleration this 5 kilogram object experiences if it is subject to these three forces that I have drawn here, a 30 newton force, a 20 newton force, and a 15 newton force in the directions that I have shown. And so just like any other time that you've worked with vectors, the way that we'll work with force vectors when working with Newton's second law is we will add up the forces in the x direction and we will add up the forces in the y direction. So starting in the x direction, I notice that the 30 Newton and 20 Newton forces point in the y direction, and so the only force I have to consider is the 15 Newton force. And so I'm just going to write plus 15 Newtons. The net force in the x direction is positive because that force points in the positive direction, and that's the only force acting on the object in that direction the net force in the y direction 
is due to the sum of the 30 and 20 newton forces. The 30 newton force is in the positive direction, so I'll write plus 30 newtons minus the 20 newtons due to the force that's pointing down. And so the net force in the y direction is plus 10 newtons. So the net force in the x direction is plus 15 newtons. The net force in the y direction is plus 10 newtons. So if I wanted to figure out the total net force, the magnitude of the net force, um, I could take the x component and the y component, square them, add them up, take the square root, and that would be the magnitude of the net force. You might even be able to imagine the x component being 15 newtons, the y component being 10 newtons, and that the magnitude of the net force would be given by the hypotenuse of that triangle, and that's what we're trying to find, the magnitude of the net force. And so that net force magnitude is given by the square root of 15 squared plus 10 squared. And the square root of 15 squared plus 10 squared is about 18 newtons. And so the magnitude of the net force acting on this object is 18. The uh, thing that I was originally uh, seeking out was the magnitude and direction of the acceleration. But I know that if I know the magnitude of the net force, then I can use the magnitude of the net force to find the acceleration. And so what I'd like to do next is I'd like to find the acceleration by dividing the net force by the mass of the object. So the net force was 18, the mass of the object was 5, and so the, the magnitude of the acceleration, really, I haven't found the direction yet, the magnitude of the acceleration is about 3.6 meters per second squared. And so that's one piece of the acceleration, and the second piece would be the direction, which I could describe by an angle. If you look at the, the force triangle that I've drawn on the left, the angle would be this angle here, which I can call theta. And I could find that angle because I know that tan theta, the tangent of theta, is equal to the opposite side of that triangle, 10 newtons, divided by the adjacent side, which is 15 newtons. And so the angle itself would be the inverse tangent of 10 over 15. And I believe the inverse tangent of 10 over 15 is about 33.7 degrees. And so now we know that the object experiences a 3.6 meters per second squared acceleration at an angle of 33.7 degrees above the positive x-axis. And so the way you might summarize this in an answer is the 5 kilogram object, the 5 kilogram object experiences a 3.6 meters per second squared acceleration, 33.7 degrees above the positive x axis. Something like that. That summarizes uh, both the magnitude and direction of the acceleration that the object is experiencing. Lastly, I'd like to talk a little bit about Newton's third law, which says if two objects are interacting, the forces they exert on one another are equal in magnitude, but opposite in direction. And the example that I'd like to apply this law uh, to is this picture of this block being pushed against the wall. And there are two forces I'm going to consider. Uh, and, and so what Newton's third law would say is the force on the wall due to the box FWB, the force on the wall due to the box, is equal and opposite to the force on the box due to the wall. And so one way that this could be represented is we could write this as FWB is equal and opposite or is equal to minus F 
BW. The magnitudes of those two forces are equal, but they point in opposite directions. And I can still um, rationalize why some objects accelerate, why some objects move, uh, because these equal and opposite forces are always exerted on different objects. So Newton's third law says for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction, which might lead some to believe that all forces have a, another force which is always balancing them or canceling them out. But these forces, as you can see, are exerted on different objects. One of these forces is exerted on the wall, and one of these forces is exerted on the box. And so those forces don't cancel. They just are equal and opposite and exist as a pair, uh, but are exerted on different objects. And one way that we can apply Newton's third law in a problem is like the example that I have down below, which reads, two blocks with masses M1 and M2 are touching on a frictionless horizontal surface. A force F is applied to block 1. Find an expression for the mutual contact force N between the surfaces of the two blocks only in terms of the two masses and the applied force. And so the, the image that I have here down below shows a force F being applied to block 1, pushing it to the right into block 2, which has a different mass. And I've copied that picture down below because the second picture that I'd like to draw is a proper free body diagram for blocks 1 and 2, whereas the top picture kind of just shows us that the force F is pushing the two blocks to the right. Really, the way that I should draw a free body diagram is all of the forces acting on block 1 will be represented as arrows starting on and pointing away from the dot that I've just drawn. And all of the forces acting on block 2 will be uh, symbolized with an arrow starting on and pointing away from the dot that I've drawn on block 2. And so on block 1, I think that there are four forces that are exerted. Uh, one of those forces is the gravitational force, which points downward, and we could label that M1 times G. There's a normal force that is exerted upwards from the surface, and I could label that, traditionally we'll just label that N, but here uh, the force N is already uh, taken to be the symbol for the force between the surfaces of the two blocks. And so instead of just calling this a generic normal force N, I'll call this N1. Uh, the force, capital letter F, which points to the right and acts on block 1, should also be added to block 1's free body diagram. And so that force could be labeled like this. And then because of the force F, block 1 pushes into block 2, and there's a force to the left on block 1. And that force is that mutual contact force N that is being asked of in the problem. And so those are the four forces that are acting on block 1. Now block 2, there are three forces acting on block 2. The first two are the ones that we typically think of, the downward gravitational force, which is equal to m2 times g. There's an upwards normal force, which we can call n2 for consistency. The force, capital letter F, does not act on block 2. Uh, capital letter, that applied force, capital letter F, only acts on block 1. But because of that applied force, there is that mutual contact force, uh, capital letter N, that normal force between the two surfaces that acts on block 2, and that acts on block 2 to the right. And so notice that the two blocks exert equal and opposite uh, forces on one another, and those are symbolized with the capital letter N in this free body diagram. So what I would like to do is I would like to write Newton's second law equations for the x and y direction and try to use those equations to find an expression for the normal force only in terms of m1, m2, and the applied force f.
Now we won't need all of those equations. We only need a couple of them, but I think it's good practice to write all of them. And so I'm going to start uh, by writing the equations for block one. And so for block one, I can write the sum of the forces in the x direction is equal to the mass, its mass, times the acceleration in the x direction. And for block one, what that looks like is F, which points to the right, and I'll call that positive, minus N, which points to the left, so it's negative, is equal to that object's mass, which is M1, times its acceleration, which we'll call A. And I can do the same thing in the Y direction. So the sum of the forces in the Y direction is equal to the object's mass times its acceleration in the y direction and we know that these objects would not accelerate in the y direction and so the sum of the forces will be equal to zero in the y direction for both blocks but for block one we know that n1 the upwards force minus m1g the downwards force is equal to zero and now I can do the same thing for block two and the equations will look quite similar so for block two, I know that in the x direction, only that, uh, that mutual contact force N is acting on the object. So N is equal to now M2 times the acceleration. And in the y direction, I know that N2 minus M2G is equal to zero. So I've written uh, four equations, right? One two, three, four. And those four equations uh, can be used to study the motion of these objects. In particular, I am going to need uh, this equation, the first one that I wrote, and this equation, the third equation that I wrote, in order to solve this problem that was being asked. And I need those two uh, because those two equations uh, could be combined to eliminate the variable uh, of the acceleration to write the expression that's being asked for. So what I'd like to do is I'll start by writing the first equation which was F minus N equals M1A and I'm going to substitute in the expression for N. So N is equal to from the third equation M2A. So F minus M2A is equal to M1A and now I can have an expression for the acceleration. The acceleration is given by, if I add M2A to both sides, I know that M1A plus M2A is equal to F, which means that A is equal to F divided by the sum of the masses, M1 plus M2. And now that I have an expression for the acceleration that depends on M1, M2, and F, I can substitute that expression back into either one of the equations and get the expression that I need. Since the third equation was simpler, I should substitute it back into that equation. So I know that N equals M2 times A, and so I know that N is equal to M2 times the expression I just found, F divided by the sum of the masses. And so lastly, I can write N is equal to M2 times F divided by the sum of the masses M1 plus M2. And this is exactly the expression that I'm looking for in this problem. And one of the things that I like to point out with this expression is that uh, if you notice that in the bottom the masses are added but in the numerator M2 is there. Which means that if M2 were heavier then the contact force between the two objects becomes larger um, even though it's also in the denominator because in the denominator it's being added but in the numerator it's being multiplied by the force F. So as M2 increases the normal force between the surfaces of the objects uh, will also increase.